Hey there, I'm Sarah, just your average single mom trying to keep it all together. Before I dive into this crazy story, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, would you? Trust me, you're going to want to hear how this mess unfolds. I'm pushing 50, working my butt off at two jobs just to keep the lights on. It's been that way ever since my husband Mike passed away when our daughter Emily was just a kid. Man, those early days were rough. I remember nights when I'd eat nothing but ramen so Emily could have a proper dinner. But you do what you gotta do for your kid, right? As Emily grew up, I busted my chops to give her everything I could. Piano lessons, summer camps, you name it. I wanted her to have all the opportunities I never had. When she got into college, I nearly cried. My baby girl was gonna make it big. Fast forward to a few months ago. Emily, now 25 and working at some fancy marketing firm, drops by for our weekly dinner. She's practically glowing. Mom, I have amazing news. I'm all ears, thinking maybe she got a promotion or something. Rick proposed. We're getting married. Now, I'd met Rick a few times. Nice enough guy? Comes from money. I was thrilled for Emily. Don't get me wrong. But something in my gut twisted a little. That's wonderful, honey. I'm so happy for you too. Emily starts gushing about rings and venues, and I'm nodding along, already mentally calculating how I can help out. Of course I'll help with the planning, sweetie. Whatever you need. That's when things started to... shift. Over the next few weeks, Emily's calls became all about the wedding, and not in a good way. Mom, you should see the Stevenson's house. It's like a mansion compared to our place. Rick's mom is taking me to this exclusive bridal boutique. I doubt you'd know it. Each comment was like a little knife, you know. But I brushed it off. Wedding stress, I figured. Then came the bombshell. Emily invited me over to discuss the wedding budget. I show up with a notebook, ready to crunch numbers. She's sitting there with this look on her face, like she's about to tell me the dog died. Mom, I've been looking at venues, and I found the perfect place. It's where all of Rick's cousins got married. I'm nodding, thinking, okay, maybe we can make this work. It's $50,000 for the venue alone. My jaw hit the floor. Honey, that's, that's more than I make in a year. Emily's face hardened. Well, it's tradition for the bride's family to pay for the wedding. Rick's parents are covering the honeymoon. Sweetie, I want to help, but that's just not possible. Maybe we could look at some more affordable options? That's when she lost it. More affordable? God, Mom, why do you always have to be so cheap? This is my special day. I tried to reason with her, explain that I'd need to take out a second mortgage just to cover half of what she wanted, but Emily wasn't having it. If you really loved me, you'd find a way to make this happen. I guess I know where I stand now. As I left her apartment that night, my heart breaking, I couldn't help but wonder, when did my sweet little girl turn into this person I barely recognized? And how the hell was I going to fix this mess? For the next few weeks, I was like a woman possessed. I picked up every extra shift I could at the diner, even started doing some online freelance work. Sleep? Who needs it when your kid's happiness is on the line, right? I managed to scrape together about $15,000. It wasn't anywhere near what Emily wanted, but it was everything I had. I figured if I presented her with a more modest plan, she'd see reason. Boy, was I wrong. I showed up at her place with a folder full of ideas, cheaper venues, DIY decorations, the works. Emily took one look and lost it. Are you kidding me? This looks like a backyard barbecue, not a wedding. Honey, I'm trying here. This is all I can afford. All you can afford? God, Mom, why can't you just try harder? This is my perfect day and you're ruining it. I felt like I'd been slapped. Emily, I'm doing my best. I've been working double shifts, barely sleeping. Oh, here we go again with the martyr act. You know what? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you always making me feel guilty for wanting nice things. That's when the floodgates opened. All the resentment Emily had apparently been holding on to came pouring out. Do you have any idea how embarrassing it was growing up? Always being the kid with the cheap clothes, the off-brand shoes? And now you're trying to cheap out on my wedding too? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Emily, everything I did was for you. I worked my fingers to the bone to give you a good life. A good life? We were poor, Mom. And now you're going to make me look poor in front of Rick's family too. I tried to reason with her, explain that love and family were more important than impressing people with money but Emily wasn't having it. You know what? Don't bother coming to the wedding. You'd probably just embarrass me anyway. 
It felt like my heart had been ripped out. You... you don't mean that. I do. I don't want you there. You're uninvited. I left Emily's apartment in a daze. How had this happened? Where had I gone wrong? The next few days were a blur. I called in sick to work, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. My best friend Donna came over, tried to snap me out of it. Sarah, honey, you can't let her treat you like this. You're a damn good mother. I just shook my head. Maybe if I'd done things differently. My co-worker Jake stopped by too, bringing comfort food and a sympathetic ear. Boss is worried about you, Sarah. We all are. This ain't right. What your girl's doing. I appreciated their concern, but I felt hollow inside. Had I really messed up Emily's life that badly? A few days later, I dragged myself to work. As I was clearing tables, I overheard a couple of college girls gossiping. Did you see Emily's Instagram story from her bachelorette party? Talk about wild. I know, right? That trip to Vegas looked insane. Where'd she get the money for all that? I froze, rag in hand. Vegas? But Emily had said they were just doing a quiet night in the city. And how could she afford a trip like that when she was demanding I pay for the wedding? Something wasn't adding up. And for the first time since this whole mess started, I felt a spark of anger replacing my sadness. What exactly was my daughter up to? I didn't want to go to the damn community picnic, but Donna practically dragged me there. Said I needed to stop moping and rejoin the living. Whatever. I was just going through the motions, picking at my potato salad, when I heard a familiar voice. Sarah, there you are. We've been wondering where you've been hiding. It was Rick's mom, Margaret. Great. Just what I needed. Oh, hi, Margaret. I've been... busy. She looked confused. But surely you've had time for wedding planning. Emily said you were taking a step back, but we assumed you'd still be involved. Now it was my turn to be confused. Taking a step back? What do you mean? Margaret's face softened. Oh, dear. Emily told us you were struggling with empty nest syndrome and didn't want to be too involved. She said you even refused to contribute financially. My blood ran cold. That lying little... I forced a smile. Must have been a misunderstanding. Excuse me? I bolted, my mind reeling. Emily had been lying to everyone? Why? The next day, Donna burst into the diner during my shift, looking like she'd seen a ghost. Sarah, you're not going to believe this. My niece Jess, the one who works with Emily, she just called me, said she overheard something weird and thought I should know. Turns out, Emily had been embezzling money from her company to fund her lavish wedding and that Vegas trip. Jess had seen her fudging expense reports and transferring funds to her personal account. I felt sick. This wasn't my Emily. My Emily would never steal. What are you going to do? Donna asked. I honestly didn't know. Part of me wanted to march right down to Emily's office and confront her, but another part, hell, she was still my baby girl. Jake found me crying in the break room later. When I told him what was going on, his eyes hardened. This ain't right, Sarah. Your girl's breaking the law. You gotta do something. He offered to help me gather evidence. Over the next week, we dug deep. Jake's got a buddy in IT who helped us access Emily's work computer remotely. What we found made me want to throw up. Forged documents fake invoices, bank statements showing huge transfers. My little girl had stolen nearly $100,000, but that wasn't even the worst of it. While digging through Emily's emails, we found messages between Rick and Emily's maid of honor, Chloe. Explicit messages. Photos. My future son-in-law was cheating on my daughter with her best friend. I was reeling. How had everything gotten so messed up? You gotta turn her in, Jake said. But I couldn't. Not yet. I had to give her one last chance. I called Emily, asked to meet. She agreed, probably thinking I was going to cave on the wedding money. We met at a coffee shop. Emily looked annoyed from the start. What do you want, Mom? I'm busy with wedding stuff. I took a deep breath. Emily, honey, I know what's been going on. The embezzlement, the lies. And I know about Rick and Chloe. For a split second, I saw fear in her eyes. Then it was gone, replaced by cold anger. I don't know what you're talking about. You're just trying to ruin my wedding because you're jealous. Sweetie, please, just tell me the truth. We can fix this together. Emily stood up, her voice low and cruel. The truth? The truth is you're a sad, pathetic woman who can't stand to see her daughter happy. Stay away from me and my wedding, or I'll get a restraining order. As she stormed out, I sat there, stunned. My daughter, 
My baby girl was gone, and in her place was a stranger I didn't recognize at all. The day of Emily's wedding arrived, and I was a bundle of nerves. I'd spent the night before going over the plan with Jake and Donna, making sure we had all our ducks in a row. This was it. No turning back now. I pulled up to the swanky hotel where the ceremony was being held, straightening my simple dress. As I walked in, I could feel the stares. Guests whispered, probably wondering who invited the middle-aged woman in the off-the-rack outfit. I slipped into the back row just as the music started. Emily looked beautiful walking down the aisle. I'll give her that. But all I could see was the web of lies she'd spun. The minister began the ceremony. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it might burst out of my chest. Emily and Rick exchanged sickeningly sweet smiles as they prepared to say their vows. I, Emily, take you, Rick. That was my cue. I stood up, my voice shaking but clear. I'm sorry, but I can't let this go on. The crowd gasped. Emily's head whipped around, her eyes wide with shock and fury. Mom, what are you doing here? Get out! I took a deep breath. I'm here to tell the truth, Emily. The truth you've been hiding from everyone. I pulled out a folder of documents, holding them up for all to see. My daughter has been lying to all of you. She's been embezzling money from her company to pay for this wedding. Over $100,000 stolen to fund her lavish lifestyle. The crowd erupted in murmurs. Emily's boss, Mr. Johnson, stood up, his face red with anger. What is the meaning of this, Emily? But I wasn't done. I turned to Rick, who looked like he wanted to disappear. And you, Rick. You've been cheating on my daughter with her maid of honor, Chloe. Chloe, standing near Emily, went pale. Rick's parents gasped in horror. We have proof, I continued, my voice growing stronger. Bank statements, forged documents, emails. It's all here. Chaos erupted. Emily's boss was shouting about pressing charges. Rick's parents were demanding explanations. And in the middle of it all, Emily and Rick stood frozen, their perfect day crumbling around them. You bitch! Emily screamed at me. You've ruined everything! Rick turned on Emily. You stole money? What the hell, Em? Emily whirled on him. Oh, like you're so innocent, screwing my best friend behind my back. As they tore into each other, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. The truth was out. It was over. Mr. Johnson approached me, his face grim. I'll need those documents, ma'am. We'll be pressing charges. I handed them over without hesitation. Of course. Rick's father, red-faced with embarrassment, announced loudly, The wedding is off, and don't expect a penny from us, Richard. You're cut off. As security began escorting the shouting couple out, Emily locked eyes with me one last time. For a moment, I saw a flicker of the little girl I used to know. Then it was gone, replaced by cold hatred. I hope you're happy, Mom. You've ruined my life. I shook my head, suddenly feeling very tired. No, Emily. You did that all on your own. As I walked out of the hotel, leaving the chaos behind, I felt... free. The daughter I knew was gone, had been gone for a long time. And while that hurt, I knew I'd done the right thing. Donna and Jake were waiting for me outside. Donna pulled me into a hug. You okay, honey? I took a deep breath, looking up at the sky. For the first time in months, I felt like I could breathe again. Yeah, I said, surprising myself with how much I meant it. Yeah, I think I am. The story's over, folks. Now I gotta ask, was I right to expose Emily's lies and crimes at her wedding? Some might say I went too far, airing dirty laundry in public. Others might think it was the only way to stop her spiral of deceit. What would you have done in my shoes? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'm real curious to hear what you think about this messy situation. If you enjoyed this wild ride, hit that like button and subscribe to catch more stories like this. Trust me, life's full of drama, and I've got plenty more to share. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you in the next one.